Yeah, so as, you, as you've just heard from Klaus, um, yeah, the connectivity kit uh, will be rewritten. You, everybody heard that, didn't they? November, did he say? Yes, uh, we'll hold him to that, shall we? Because you'll see during this presentation that maybe the weakest part is the connectivity kit. Um, shortly followed by every other piece of software that comes as part of this solution. <laughs> so, um, first of all, uh, I would just uh, tell you a bit about the, the Prime Connectivity Kit because it's something that is aimed at classrooms full of students using the Prime. Now, you know, I teach at the university, I don't have classrooms full of students using the Prime. In fact, I, I have one student who said, oh, that's a Prime. My dad's just bought one of those, <laughs> so, um, which is interesting. Steve? Yeah, maybe I'm the only one, but can you just spend one minute on saying what ASP Prime is? The Prime, yes. So this is, uh, do you not know? Okay, so this is the HP Prime, which is their current flagship calculator, um, brought out in 2013 and has already had a soft roll, non-new version, um, but this is a G2, the original ones. Um, so this is a, an original revision A, and if you look at the difference between the main difference between these two is if you look at the light blue uh, on the keys, um, and can you also see that the numeric pad keys are a slightly different version? Oh yes. Yeah. So that's the early one. This is the early one. Those light blue and orange keys are almost invisible in um, low energy bulb light. Great. Um, they just disappear, don't they? I think pretty much everybody's. Um, so these ones are much clearer, they're much darker. Mm. Um, it's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde calculator. It allegedly has RPN mode, but it's RPN stack for basic calculations, yeah. but not a lot else. It has its uh, native prime uh, application environment, which has got the prime programming language, which is, what do we think, basic -y, Pascal-y type HP e. Pascal. HP Pascal. Yeah, so um, you can program it in that. It's also got the CAS, so the computer algebra system, which is a separate environment. So you use a button on the opposite side of the keyboard to invoke it. And, in, and that does CAS stuff. Can I, do I need to say any more about that? Because that's as much as I know, and I've used, pressed that button maybe three times in nine years. So, um, what it's also got in, in latest firmware is that it's got, it originally, well, at some version of firmware, it got Python-like syntax added to the CAS programming environment, but it's now got a full Python environment, which allows it, uh, for example, uh, if I've got it on here, so there are some programs, I'm sorry, this is going to be a bit difficult to see. Um, but this is a, a Python pra fa fractal, <laughs> fractal <laughs> program. <laughs> fractal program. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> see the mandel graph set, isn't it? Yeah, so, and, but it is mind-bogglingly quick. And I think what we've observed, and we'll quiz Cyril tomorrow, is that if you run things in Python, the, CP, the ARM CPU is running flat out. If you run in PPL, it seems to be running throttled in order to preserve battery life. So actually the Python environment is faster, um, but the PPL environment is, is very, very fast. So um, you may, for example, um, I wrote this little game, which is a bit like OutRun, and I get eight, seven, eight frames a second. Well seven frames a second on the original version and this one has delay loops in it so so i could get much better performance out of it that's not in machine code there's no machine code access available on this because they didn't want students mucking about with the firmware um, because one of the main features is the exam mode and it has three lights up at the top three leds you can put it exact in exam mode disable pieces of functionality in it. So for example, turn off the CAS mode. So they've not got the computer algebra mode. They've just got a basic calculator. And so you can restrict students to using it in exam mode uh, with, a, with a restricted level of features. Um, and the teacher knows that it's in exam mode because they can put a unique pattern of LEDs across the front and they can look at everybody's calculator and say, yes, they're running, uh, they're, you know, they're part of the classroom.
Yeah. Mark, why yeah. didn't that ever take off in schools and universities? Because was it just bad marketing? Was it? Has it been marketed? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, good point. Um, <laughs> and and you, you you know from a you you've got to get a class of thirty students or whatever to to spend one hundred and twenty pounds per machine. Um, and you, you know, you, need, you tend to need people to promote them. So I think it's taken off better in Europe, where there is, they, you know, like the Dutch. Klaus was saying about the, um, the Dutch exam change that they needed to put in the latest version of firmware. But in this country, what Casio rules the roost, doesn't it? Pretty much in terms of calculators at school. In the so states, it's TI. TI in the states, it's TI. Well. It's different in different. So. I think lack of marketing and awareness and that sort of thing. Um, who knows? Bloody, yeah. It was largely designed to sell in China to Chinese schools. Right. They kept telling us how wonderful it's selling in China. But when we saw the graph that Jake asked and we showed again, uh, we didn't see anything that looked like no. China taking past numbers. It's curious, isn't it? Yeah. So. Is, is that okay? Is that a good enough intro to the Prime? Everybody happy? We're up to date with Prime, we know what we do. Okay, so um, thanks to Klaus for sending us a kit, uh, which I don't think we've got to send back. I'm hoping we haven't got to send back. Um, so, we'll have a quick look at uh, the purpose is, is basically this classroom idea, what you get, some, the compatibility of the kit, some, the, some of the capabilities, and we'll try it out. So everybody who has a Rev C or Rev D prime <laughs> we'll try this because none of us have seen this work in a classroom myself included so so does it work does it actually do what it's supposed to say in the tin the best that I've been able to do is run a wired Rev A with a wireless Rev D with a virtual prime that's that's my classroom setup that I've had running on here the number of times it's crashed it's it, unbelievable. So uh, anyway, so we'll have a look. So the purpose, primarily a classroom environment. And it, so it uses, a, it's basically a star network and it's zero touch configuration. So basically the idea is that you plug the dongle in, you, it's not Wi-Fi, there's no config, you're not mucking about with SSIDs, yeah? um, you're not setting up networks, there's no passwords on this, there is no eavesdropping. Um, and it allows a teacher to push and pull content between the teacher and people in the class. So the teacher can pull the uh, information from a, a student in the class and then they can distribute it to other students in the class. It is not like a 48, 49, 50 where you've got bi-directional communication between two devices. It does not support that. So it is not, you know, it's useless unless it's being used with the software and, and in the kit, which we'll talk about, you'll, you'll see it's, only, it's got one uh, wireless base station. So what you get in the box, there we go, we're, we're going to do the unwrapping. This is, uh, here's the box, uh, nice, plain, uh, recyclable packaging. It says on the back, what's inside? One antenna, 30 USB wireless modules, one quick setup poster, and one warranty document. If you're interested, it's ma made by Cable Max Electronics in, yeah, I shan't even attempt to pronounce any of that, but China. Um, and if we look inside the box, um, yeah, it said on the back, it said, one quick setup poster. So this is the quick setup poster, are you ready? Uh, here it is in all of its glory. That's the quick setup poster, blank on the back. So there is not a lot to it, yeah? Um, and most of that is do something um, in, in a different language, yeah? So there is, there is not a lot to this, and, it, and it's designed to be very simple. So what you get uh, is a Hewlett Packard branded base station, um, and the only thing that I've done in order to use this particular Mac is that I've added a USB-A to USB-C dongle to it in order to make it work. So we'll try that in a sec. So you get the, the base station, and then down in the bottom of the box, we have 30, of which 29 are unopened, little dongles. So if you have, uh, if you want to pass the box round and take 
Uh, if you're going to play, if you're going to try playing, take take a, take a dongle, unwrap it, um, and um, I, I would like them all back because they aren't any use to you when you when we finish this because there is only one base station and I'm keeping that. So. Um, and it means that we can play with this in future at meetings so and that sort of stuff. Are paired with the base station? Yes, they are. Um, well, we, no, we'll get onto this. I'll, I'll, they, they are sort of paired with the base station. We'll have a look. Because what happens if you're at this fantastic future education environment and uh, your classrooms are adjacent to each other? Yeah, so you need to be able to actually pick the network. So, so if you've got two, but I don't have, um, then you get a drop-down list of the networks that are available, and you can name the the network. You can say it's the maths class or it's the science class or whatever. Yeah. On the calculator. Uh, on the connectivity kit, and then the calculator sees the list of networks, and you can pick which one you want to join. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the compatibility of this, despite the fact that the prime was announced as being wireless compatible, um, it, it only actually works with revision C, so G1. So if you're, not, if you're, if you're in any doubt, on the prime, if you, top, if you press the help key, then tree, then go up one to where it says about HP prime and click on that, then you'll get a screen which you may be able to see and that shows you the software version, the hardware version, and, and so this one says uh, hardware version D. Yeah. So if you go uh, help uh, tree up one to about this calculator, about HP Prime, and then you'll see the version number. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, it, it was it was stated that the this that all primes, you know, I've got it, uh, I had the revision A, and it said it had wireless capability, but um, I believe what happened is that the the capability was in there, and then there was some issue with the FCC, um, and so it got disabled in firm in a very early version of firmware. So if you if some if anybody's got a rev A that has never been touched. It's possible it might work, but if you was but it, um, um, it was so uh, it had so many issues yeah. with um, with the rev value that most people have updated the firmware. Oh, okay. the rev yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So it will it will have been disabled, I suspect, but we'll see. Um, so the the in terms of software, there is there is no software specific to the, the wireless kit. It, it uses the HP Prime's connectivity kit. So uh, the fact that they're going to hopefully work on a new version of the productivity, uh, the connectivity kit would be you know, a huge benefit because you'll see, I think it's very unlikely that I will get through this demo without numerous crashes, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it, it, if you think about it, it came out at the time of we, maybe Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh -huh. So maybe Windows 10 has broken things. Um, with, I've tried this it, as, as prep for this. I tried it on Windows 7 VM, Windows 8 VM, Windows 10 VM, Windows 10 physical, and I had the same, uh, all the drivers for, for, the, for the wireless base station get installed automatically. But I had the same number of crashes, regardless of which system I used. Um, this, uh, the other Mac that I was using earlier is uh, an Intel one, it, using the native um, Mac con connectivity kit. Still, loads of crashes. Um, somewhat amazingly, and I don't understand this. So, congratulations to Tim and his team at Apple. Um, it works on an Apple Silicon M1 and uh, with no additional software load and still crashes as much as all of the other platforms. So, well done. Uh, you, you need, of course, um, that, that magic, if you're using one of these, you need the magic dongle to connect to it. Uh, connect the USB A to USB C. Oh, do, yeah. Does everybody need to give their prime a different name? Are you going to see um, primes all showing as my prime? I think we will see lots of. Um, yeah, you, so you can do that if you go into the setup. 
So yeah, it's a good point. You might want to try that. Yeah, set up second page down. So yeah, so you go set uh, the shift settings on the home button. Yeah, uh, and then page down to page two, and it's got calculator name. So I've set mine to HP Prime MPJP G2, and I've got M G1 as well. Yeah. So if you want to do that, so um, the home, so blue shift the home button to settings, page down to page two change the calculator name, put your name in it or something like that and that'll make it easier to see who's doing what. Shifty. Yeah. Uh, Are we okay? Shifty. We're good so far? Mm. Okay, um, so as you, as you can see, the setup is this. The setup is, plug, and, and this is, uh, this, is, this, is what's on the, um, this is what's on the setup poster, uh, which is step one, plug the, wire, the wireless antenna in via USB, it says, well, yeah, CD-ROMs, that's good, isn't it? Anybody got CD-ROM? Anybody even got a CD-ROM drive? Uh, um, <laughs> so um, put in the, um, the software, uh, the connectivity kit, plug the orange thing in, and then once that's in, don't do it just yet, because we're not ready, um, we click in the right-hand corner. So, uh, so if you want to try this, I think I've got the connectivity kit going, he says. Just to plug the orange mm -hmm. thing in or it's off. Yes. Yeah, so Nigel is up on the network. Hey, that'll be you. That's me. So um, you, you, you see in the connectivity kit, um, uh, my G1's connected. I've got a virtual prime, which will be amazing if that stays up for any, uh, any longer. Um, so back at the slides, what you do, connect the dongle, top in the, tap in the top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, which drops down the little window that uh, shows you uh, the date and time and the mode that you're in and that sort of thing and the battery percentage. Oh yes. So if you tap that tap rock top home right hand corner, it's not an obvious feature. Did any, did everybody know about that feature? Yeah. 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 So so tap on that and you should see, uh, as shown on the corner there, <coughs> you should see uh, the mouse has gone. Um, you should see this empty wireless. Uh, Wi-Fi symbol. So if you tap on that, um, you'll get a list like this. Uh, you'll get a box with no network selected. So if you tap on the, on that list, and it will say looking for network. Ooh. Anybody spot the problem? <laughs> uh, that happened to me a few seconds ago. It actually completely rebooted this. Yeah, but I didn't have the dongle plugged in, so. Oh. <laughs> right, let's, try, let's try again. I was going to say, make a backup of your calculations. <laughs> so, um, so, so you should see a drop-down list. Um, this the, the screenshot I had, which of course you can't screenshot while you're doing this because you can't communicate until you've done it. So um, you will see uh, my, my class is HP class one. So if you tap on that, and it should say connecting, hopefully. Mm, yeah, right. Okay. It's amazing when things work. Yeah. Mm. This well, is. So yeah, we're, we're yeah we've yeah, got. Oh, there oh, there you go. Okay. In. So I think if, yeah we've got Bruce, Chuck, Craig, Georgi, me twice, my virtual Nigel, uh, Robert, okay, the okay, No Zone, and Lodic Second Prime. Cool. <laughs> Pretty good. Second Prime. Second Prime. Yeah. This, this is my so, first point. joke. Of prime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay, so now you are connected. Um, Interesting experiment. Um, if you go, if you try turning your calculator off at this point, I think you'll find that the off buttons have been disabled. Mm, that's true. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, good. which was interesting because that. because I'm thinking, oh, why is that? I don't know if this was a conscious design decision yeah. to stop people getting out of exam mode, yeah. or whether it's some accident. But I, I, I presume it's done intentionally. Are we in exam mode now? No, Not yet. I'd say it's intentional because if you go into off mode, it will shut down all of the peripheral power. Yeah. So you'll yes. lose connection. So you'll lose connection. The and then, and then yeah, and then the teacher will yeah will lose them. So so I, I think it is intentional. It's just an interesting thing because I had a play with it, left it all connected off, and then went off to have lunch, and my prime wouldn't turn off. And I thought, mm. well, what's going on here? So so if you want to turn it off, you've got to go into so you can press the home button and settings again. 
you now get have a fourth page if you page down and that's where the wireless settings are or tap in the top right hand corner select um, uh, pick from the list and pick uh, no network selected yeah and then, so, and then you can turn it off so leave, leave it connected for now so the, the connectivity kit and I apologize um, I'm gonna have to sit down for this um, the connectivity kit uh, allows you uh, to do all of the things that we've all done wired with the Prime in the past, we, which are sending apps, sending programs, sending data to individuals on, on, a, on a physical connection, on a wireless connection, on a virtual um, Prime on your machine. You can also, because we've probably never done this to ourselves, have we, the, there is a messaging facility so you can type, send and receive messages amongst uh, you and all of your Prime mates. See what I did there. Um, <laughs> um, and you can send polls and receive results. So this is what it looks like uh, when you set it up. Hopefully you might be able to see that. So I've created a poll. So um, you, you go up to your connectivity kit, which I've lost. There we go. Um, and in there, there is a, uh, an option that you've, you've, you've probably used, create a folder, create notes, create program an exam mode, well won't have actually used exam mode, but if you create a poll it goes through, um, you type the details in of your poll and all the rest of it. So I have created a poll already for us which looks like this and this is a bit tiny on this screen isn't it? Um, I could, do you want me to see if I can, anyway, that, so do you want me to try and expand that? Would that be useful? Let me see if I can just get my own display. It'll all come up, it'll come up in front of us. Sorry? It'll all come up in front of us here in the khaki. Let's see if I can... Uh, now, now we'll see my competence at... Um, okay, that's probably better. Okay, so inside the connectivity kit you'll see something like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I've created a new poll here, I've given it a title, there are some instructions there and then what you can do is, is it initially starts with one question and then you can uh, use the button, the up and down buttons there to add and remove questions from the poll. So I've added, um, I've put eight questions in here and you can see, so the first question now, in, if you were using this seriously, then it, you might be doing maths type of things. And you can see there are options in there for multiple choice, for a number, for a point, for an expression, for a piece of text, um, and then selection and choose options as well. So I'm not going to give you a maths class because I think you, some of you will be significantly better at it than I am. But I, I've, I've run it as a little poll so that we can talk about calculators some more. So for example, um, this first one, We've got options there of um, which series of calculators do you like the most and we've got the options. And you can see as we go through these, um, so these are selections and text ones that you can type in uh, in different boxes and, and so on. And also you've got things like Likert scales, so you can have the strongly agree, strongly disagree, you can do the, uh, there are preset ones for ABCDE. <coughs> Uh, liking, um, you've got uh, agreement, concurrence, occurrence and custom ones that you can set yourself. So there's a whole variety of different uh, options that we've got in there. Just back at the branch, where I've lost it. Where's it gone? There it is. So um, the other class facilities that you've got in there that you've probably not used are that you can, in the connectivity kit, uh, which I've lost, let's stop. This is Excel wanted, uh, PowerPoint wanting to take over. So if I go up in here, and I've lost it, full screen, come on. What did it do? It's done something to me. Oh, there it is. Um, no, there we are. No, not that one. I've lost it. So if I put in here, um, I can put messages, so I then get a window down the side. Uh, I can put monitor. <laughs> I told you, it would crash. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Let's have that another go at that. Ah, oh, come on. 
You run the next PM emulator, Windows emulator. No, no, this is the native Mac version. Oh, this is the native Mac version. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Tim, how do I? Oh, there we go. It's it's coming. Sorry. You don't have to select the person that you want to monitor. Yes. No, let me show you. No, so um, so if I put it in monitor mode, I will now see everybody's primes. Yeah. So um, and these, it looks like what it's doing is it's going around polling. It's not in real time. So if I go and play the racing game, it's not going to update it in real time, but it's going thra through the class. Um, and you can see all of the different people. And if I can, yeah, this, there are a lot of issues with this. That's very neat. How do we send you a message? Ah, uh, we'll do that, one sec. So, so here's, here are everybody's calculators. So the teacher can monitor them. If I look at messages, so, uh, and this is a stunning piece of user interface design. And you should now all have on your primes Hello Class. Yeah? Um, mine's disappeared. So, so you should also be able to send reply messages, send messages back to me as well. I think, if you want to try that. Well, there we go. Yeah, Robert's managed to send it back. Okay, so, so we've got some capability in there. Uh, you can see, yeah, we've, we've managed to crash the thing a few times. Um, but this is something we've never seen before, is it? Isn't it? Um, I can now, if I wanted to, I can stick you in uh, exam mode somewhere. Where is it? So, let's try this. Uh, and in here, look, I can I can uh, put exam mode on. Um, I can set the timeout so uh, it doesn't lock your calculator indefinitely if something goes wrong with this. Um, so we'll turn on uh, blink uh, the LEDs. Uh, I'll leave everything else the same. Um, but you see, you can see, for example, I could enable or disable different facilities in here. So I could say we'll have. Uh, not user apps, you can have some other things, yeah. So we'll turn off on these facilities. Um, and then, away we go. And if we're lucky, yeah. Yeah. everybody got an LED yeah. on the top of their primes. Oh goodness, I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Which I suppose How is many... the point of this... Uh... Well, exactly, yeah. We have not seen this before. So, yeah. um, and, and, and you can see different... Um, Flashing lights and, and that's really cool. So that's all that in the manual, but of course, uh, wasn't able to configure the lights because someone said that they were it was configurable, so you could I, know I, that everyone was. I believe it is, but I don't know how you do it. So I don't know if that's security code or something like that. I'm not sure, but anyway, yeah, I, I think I believe you can configure the lights, but I you've reached the limits of my patience. My Sorry, you can't configure the lights yourself. Like, is it random? No, no, no. It's linked to what's selected and it is available for use. Oh. And it's not available for use. Is that so right? So in, in an exam condition, mm. the people, you know, the instructions for the students will, will say, go to your right. exam mode screen, disable units and disable physics, for example. So, right. And then it will flash in a pattern. Oh, okay. And the then teacher everybody knows. will have the same pattern. If a student uh -huh. has a different pattern, then right. they haven't configured their calculator correctly. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. I, was, I didn't get that. It doesn't have the same blinking pattern on his screen. Right, so that's so, what it means. So it's a, it's a code. So this, this informs of a certain... It, yeah. yeah. So... So... So that's the exam mode. Uh, I'll stop the exam mode, and hopefully that will that will turn off everybody's LEDs, and and now you back to you you actually own your prime again, rather than me owning them all. So um, it's nice of me, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice to see the lights work. It is, isn't it? Well, we know they work now as well, don't we? I didn't do that since I about four five years ago. Yeah. So uh, what I will do then? Just see if I can go back to the PowerPoint. Um, so these are the main features. So if you run a poll, um, you get an instruction page and you get one question per page with the little page up, page down. Um, the, te the teacher can 
enable, can disable the go backer page. Uh, multiple choice shows you five options, uh, but you can, it's weird, you can only pick one of them. You can have custom or preset choices including A, B, C, D, true and false, yes or no, like at three scale, like at five scale. Um, you can also ask for numbers, points, expressions, text. Selection allows multiple selection of up to six items, so you'll get, you'll get five or six items for, um, and then you can pick them. Choose lets you pick one item from a drop-down list of up to six items. So they're, they're the various options that you've got in the poll. So I think, uh, you don't need to be able to read this because we, we're going to do it um, and see how we get on. So let me see if I can open my poll again. And what I will do is, and this is where it could go horribly wrong. <laughs> so if everybody's on the network, which I'm not, then if I go send to everybody oh. you should have a page now which says thank you for attending the HPCC 40th conference and I'll do that on my virtual prime oh, very good, very, very good. Ooh, no. No. Okay, that was a bit horrid wasn't it yeah, so it's you've got this weird thing. I've got this weird thing. It's not allowing me to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. that's really horrid, isn't it? Oh, come on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask you to send it it's lost it. It, it, it is um, so I can't show you it for some reason. That's let me let me try another send. Just one second, because I had to. Oh, I did something to mine. It seems to be working on mine. It seems to be working on mine. So you should get a screen like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah and then pages. then you can go page down. So which which series of HP calculators do you like the most? And you can pick from a drop down list. Don't let me influence you. Page down. Uh, which features do you value the most? So, yeah, we've got multiple choice on here. Does it actually tell you what type of choice it is? Would it give something different? It was just one out of the five. Uh, I, I think everything comes. Let me. I think everything comes up as tick boxes. Yeah. Um, you, because, yeah. That, you, yeah, Sorry. Chosen what the questions I've are. chosen what the questions are. Yes. Yeah. So, so this one allows multiple choices out of your six options. So. Uh, the other one was yeah. drop down. So effectively only one. Yes. I don't have any idea how to do this. So do I got this thing down. stuck up there from Python, and I can't get it make it go away. Oh, go on. Yeah. It's gonna go away. Is that? It goes away there, but then it keeps. Can you get? Mm. Um, so if you page through, what is your favourite machine? You should be able to type in. Too hard. Too hard. Everybody's looking. What do we think? <laughs> okay. Uh, which machine's missing from your collection that you would like the most? <sighs> These are hard, aren't they? Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> is everybody getting through these? Are, are you are you getting all the options? No. Yeah, I've just press send. You just press send. Excellent. So. Um, yeah, I'm stuck. Right, there you go. I just sent. Is it what? Hmm. This is what I'm, I'm going about. radical. <laughs> I'm totally radical. Yeah. <laughs> So here, here's one where you can only pick one of the options, yeah? Yeah. So um, yeah, you've got multiple choices, but you can only pick one or the other. Uh, and here's uh, the final uh, final one is a Likert scale. So you can see we've got uh, one option. You can only pick one option, and it ranges from strongly agreed to strongly disagree. Okay. And then when, you can go back and edit your, your answers, and then when you've done, 
and this is where the demo, the next demo crash takes place. Okay. No! <laughs> it has not. So I'm amazed. Um, so, so, now it's to the the so this is where the next crash takes place. <laughs> you never know. Has, has everybody submitted? I can't. No, 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 no. Yours has crashed. Uh, I, I, I oh, it's 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 anyway, it's because because exactly can, so the, can the teacher see who submitted the new asset? So you can see oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, So you won't be able to send you a lost can it? Yeah, but what we should what we should have is is uh, it seems to ma manage to have saved it, saved it, mm. but, but for the people who had managed to submit. And then what you get back is interesting because it is generated um, over here. We have a uh, bar chart of uh, the popular values. The, the interesting thing is that if you look at this, um, and you can see down here there is a send to class button in the bottom corner, what it's going to send is D1, which is a list containing 3, 5, 2, and 3. which So it doesn't really help you get back to um, what the question was that was asked, does it? There's no linkage back at the moment. So it, mm. it could do with improving, couldn't it? Mm. Um, so what was the first question? I would have to go back. So the first question was... At the top. Oh, was it? It's just not on the calculator when you send Sorry. it back. Mm. So it's not like it's a tagged list or named after the question. Oh, which series of HP yeah, but it's not got the answers, so I can't right. see. Oh, I see yeah, um, so all it's come up with is three, five, two, and three. Oh, so, yeah. so I need to go back to uh, the poll. Um, so I presume so they're then not they're not numbered. They're not numbered. No. Well, number so two obviously was Voyager series. One, one yeah. to six, top to bottom. So, so there is a bit of well, Lodic. Sorry. You said it's and well, mine's turned itself off. Yeah, mine did that as well, actually. So, so it's hitting the timeout. You can't turn it off, yourself, it turn it off it yourself, it yourself, but it turns itself off, and then it's disconnected when it comes back on, which is weird, isn't it? Uh, I can't get it. Can you send it again? Maybe. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have another go. We've got plenty of time to um, to have a play with this. I think. Well, it's worked we? pretty well then. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not so, bad um, so you can see what they were getting at, uh, the, and you can see. Again, here we've got a histogram. It, it, um, the next one, which is your favourite machine, so we got a list um, because it was a text. So we've got a 16C, a 28C, and a couple of 41s that people have typed in. Uh, so um, I'm with Vlodek on this one. Bruce, he never, he didn't know what a 41 was until we showed him the other day. Um, <laughs> so, um, missing from your collection, I guess that's uh, yeah. Nigel was missing a 67. Uh, I'm missing a 29C. Any donations greatly accepted. Um, Bruce is missing nothing. That is pretty impressive. That must be an impressive uh, collection. Or, he, or, act or actually, he's not really interested. <laughs> <laughs> nothing float nothing floats his boat because he's got his 28 and he's happy is um, um so so we get a bit better which machine would you like to have relaunched 41 41 48 49 95 well that's an interesting choice well 95 was never actually launched was it so that would be uh, definitely yeah. a first time launch um the this one so what was yeah this was the Likert scale but again it, it's not sort of related it back which is a bit unfortunate. Um, the, uh, the yeah yeah you can but it but you get these options so it okay. it doesn't so it, doesn't it doesn't really help. Um, in fact, it, it was working previous. I'm pretty sure this. Mm. I I had some variation in screens but you can see. I mean if they rewrite. The connectivity kit, so that some of this works. My my only fear is that they rewrite the connectivity kit, not realising that there's this massive amount of functionality that we've all missed for the last nine years because it's it, it's all in this thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, I think actually, if you use a connectivity kit and you use the Android something, there's a lot of that you can do. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, um, the security thing, but you know, for demonstration purposes. And yeah, yeah. Um, you know, people learn things. It's okay, like. So, uh, yeah. So, interpreting the results you can see is a bit tricky. I mean, if it was more mathematical based, 
then then we might stand a chance. But the fact that it represents everything that we've clearly asked yeah. for textual options, um, but it then only presents it as, a, as in this format. Well, because one of the things that's quite useful is if one student has figured out how to do it, yeah. Exactly. That. Yes. That. Yeah. Exactly. So. So if somebody's playing with a, if we look at the monitors, uh, where is it? Is it gone? No. Oh, it's, it's, right. it's, it's there. Well, thank you. Yeah. So what what you can do is we can look at somebody's calculator, for example, um, and we can say, well, what are they doing? And then it, it will zoom in and give us a, a screenshot of what they're playing about at. Oh, so that, yeah, that was that was me. Okay. Um, oh, your so, fractal thing. Oh, fractal thing. But um, Actually, I forgot how to run it. Yeah. So if somebody else, yeah. So um, Robert, what are you messing about at? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Drawing graphs. Would you like to explain that to the class? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I understood it when I entered it. Okay. Uh, well, here's what, let me see how fast it is. Well, if you go back to Mike, does it go back? Oh, oh there it is. Hold on, it will, it will come up. That. There we go, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, the cool thing. Some of you were asking about what they can do. So these are different things in different colors. And um, one of them that I really like is, you see the second two use the... Uh, yeah, logical expression. Uh, co comparison, comparison rather than equals, yeah. so you can draw lines or colors. So then you go back to the plot, you see that it's coloring things in based upon the. Yeah. Although, apparently, those weren't very interesting comparisons because it's really just greater than less than zero. But, <laughs> but, but it's interesting, isn't it? That it's. Um you know, you can you can get a real time. So you can say to a student, "So, how did you get this expression? How did you get that? Uh, come to that calcula You know, come to that conclusion or whatever on your data, um, and you can see it in real time, capture it, uh, and and all the rest. So, quite nice, quite nice. Only I can never. The cows here. This one's really. Oh. I've never figured out how to use that at all. No, it's it's it is a whole different world, isn't it? So there we go. Um, so that's quick run through the poll example. So you get the idea, and, and like I say, there's, there's things if you're running a maths class, points and numbers and expressions that students can send back to you. So uh, a whole variety of different options. The, the poll results, there, was, there, uh, there is this one where we can look at, um, what's it come back? No. I can't get this out of. Oh, there it is. Um, lost the thing. <laughs> See my message. Yeah, so so you can look at um, you you can you can get the all the whole of the poll uh, information and then tick all the options that you want and send it back. And every time I try doing this, send it to the class. Uh, oh, Craig, Craig's got a nice one. Um, but I think when I tried this, uh, I'm pretty sure I, I, if I hit this button, it's entirely possible that I'll crash everybody's prime in the room. Ooh, very good. So, oh, very good. Did it? No. No. no nothing well, nothing. it works better oh, with yeah. 20 yeah. people connected than with. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The smoke smells. Why does smoke space to come up though? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Was it reboot random number? Or it, it was the reboot with the sort of the HP sort yeah, of. Yeah, no, mine just is rebooting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's as far as I managed to get. So uh, there we go. So I think uh, that. You you can send the data back um, and in fact, mine reboots every time it connects. Just oh, data point. This is cool. So um, yeah. Should so we be seeing the results. Sorry. Should we be seeing the results? Of the I hit send to class, so it, something should have come up, but oh, no, I haven't received anything. Nothing came up. Nothing came up. Maybe because I never submitted it. Yeah. Just made them all reboot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's all it ever did in, in my testing. So. <laughs> Might was even a, reboot. It's, uh, <laughs> just, just, just reconnect. Just yeah. Reconnect, sorry. Okay. So uh, there we go. I mean, that that was what I was going to show you. You can see it's quite a specific use case. This is not. You can you can see why we've never seen this. You've got to have a classroom. Everybody in your classroom's got to have a prime. Okay. Um, you know, and then you've got to go and spend. 300, 400 pounds, is it, or something like that? Um, yeah. Buying buying the box. Uh, is this full of actually sold to or is this 
Is that yep. what I yeah, yeah, and he did say in the, in the thing that he would continue selling this. So yeah. this is a current uh, product? This is a current product, yeah, so you can buy the G2. Schools do you use this? We, believe, we, we presume. We presume. Um, there is, there is a, there is a, Chris Otley. Um, if you look him up, he's written some educational material, and he took and he talked about this. I tried to get hold of him to see if he actually still uses it, but I, I was unsuccessful getting hold of him. So I, I'm, I don't know of anybody that uses it. But, but anyway, we've now seen it in operation, so we've delved into a little observed um, aspect of. And crashing software like this it would um, be a recipe for disaster, the, yeah, it wouldn't it? It would not get anything done that fast. No. Um, so, a little bit like they tried a few, well, many years ago now to have the uh, HP39G <laughs> exactly. flash room set up. So you, could, you could buy a whole box load of these. You could buy them by, by a box load, couldn't you? Yes. But and have them yeah. effectively stay in the classroom, only yeah. by the student when they are in the classroom, so they would be. Yeah. In a way, similar to this. And, and they did various overhead projector adapters for them yeah. as well. So, um, you know, to, to uh, different times on different machines, didn't they? So the, the, the intent was clearly there, but you can see the software is letting this down. It may be because if we find a, win, you know, a Windows 7, an actual Windows 7 PC, maybe it'll work better or maybe not, but I, but I don't know. Um, so, sorry. Looking at this from a point of view of a software engineer, as you said, this is not polished at all, quite possibly no. because they're out of resources. Maybe. Oh, the, the project it, got dropped one yeah. way or another. I mean, I, I, sus I mean, we can ask Cyril about this tomorrow, but I suspect that this might have been mm. just Cyril writing code yeah. for this. You Cyril know, so. Just, he actually did all of this. Or the CAS? Uh, quite a lot. Quite a lot. Uh, well, various people. Not the CAS? Uh, I mean, Not the CAS, no. I mean, uh, so if we can turn this safely off to remove the dongle? Ha right, so um, go to um, touch in the top right hand corner, yeah. click on the wireless symbol. Yeah. From the drop down list, click, click no, no network, network selected. Yes. And then you can turn it off and pull the dongle out. Not well, you can try. Pull the dongle. <laughs> okay, so you can see interesting range of functionality, which is provided by the connectivity kit, which um, we didn't really know about until today, possibly. Um, you can see that some different poll options would have been nice, and particularly the results interpretation, I think, could have been improved. There's some graphical user howlers, you know, the fact that everything is a square box when maybe we should have radio buttons and check boxes might have been more, more correct, might it, mm. nowadays. Um, uh, I was surprised that, I mean, hey, I've just run the demo on an M1 Mac. Who'd have guessed that um, uh, some Hewlett Packard stuff from 2013 would still work on this? Um, and like, as I mentioned, it's as reliable on this as it is on every other platform that I've tried, which you've seen is not mm. saying much. So if they could improve that, I think that would be would be quite cool. Um, maybe we could, you know, material could be built, uh, information shared online and that sort of thing, and maybe we could get some sponsorship and maybe get it out into some classrooms and actually see if it's a, a valuable tool. So there we go. Yeah. Well, Vladek, sorry. Like yeah. You're talking about the classroom, but you just proved mm. it's very useful in a conference. Well. If the conference, everyone is a full-time user. Yeah. Indeed. So, and how many of those on the planet? I mean, we know that there are three of those a year on the planet, don't we well, now? So, one, <laughs> one, one other option for it is, I know that there were some of the groups we have held a thing, and basically they hired out a set where they actually did surveys like that. Mm. And we're charging very large sums of money that it would start to make primes look cheap to do that. Yeah, yeah. So it, was, it was an option because like, they were all weird consultants, so we'll charge you. Yeah. yeah. Bloody. You said there are only three conferences a year where everyone has a prime. No, teachers' conferences where HP tell teachers how to use a prime. Yeah. Have one. Well, the yeah. Is the teachers then go back to their classroom and the students haven't got one. Yeah, so indeed. Yeah. The conference for the teachers is fine. Yeah. But HP need to do something more. They keep saying how wonderful it is that entire schools in China are buying these. But I don't know whether. We Who, need to ask Cyril tomorrow. We, we need to ask Cyril. Are there actually yeah. classes in China where they're doing this? Yeah, yeah. In which case it's, he should know the bugs. Yeah, the only evidence that I've seen is Chris Otley's website yeah. where, where he sort of talked through some of this. So. See, do you know what the, the bug is? You need to run on Chinese. 
Uh, could be. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more for anyone? Could, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, Tim. I missed it, but I, I think you said something about what happens if you have an antennas in adjacent platforms. Oh, you get multiple. So, uh, so each one of these, um, you can set the network name in the connectivity kit. Oh, okay. and, and, and then um, on the prime, the drop down list will we'll, we'll list all of the available networks. So I, I didn't change the network name, I left it as the default, but um, yeah. Be, not just in the first one, but there'd be math classes. Yeah. Just, just a wee interesting thing about the lights is, um, I'm not sure, I can't remember saying whether it was for the prime or not, but there was a guy who was showing how to code your machine to put on the different coloured lights. Oh, right. Um, okay. Pretend to be. To oh, pretend to be in class. In yeah, I mean, the, the curious thing is that you can go home now um, and reverse engineer the lighting um, based on. You only need the class. We only need the connectivity kit and your wire. You don't need the co you don't need the wireless classroom you don't need kit. The connectivity kit at all. You can put your own calc into exam mode just without it. Stand alone yeah. and see what the pattern is. Yeah. Yeah. You could work out which pattern gives you which. Gives you what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cyril was very specific about that, that there are so many patterns that when you start an exam, all the calculators in the class should be flashing a particular pattern. Yeah. If he's only got three patterns available, then obviously you can show Well, no, there's three LEDs, and, and I, they come out in different combinations, I think, don't yeah, they? There's, there's yeah, there's three LEDs and three and different speeds of flashing. Yeah, they have different speeds and different combinations of them. So, in principle, yeah. the teacher should see all of them flashing very complicated. How many cars can each LED be? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> that, that's that's for us to work out during the tea break. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Okay. My blue one was flashing intermittently at the start, and then yes. school solid. After yeah. Five, so yeah. Yeah. It's There's going to make it awful the, complicated for a teacher to look and say, well, There's some the magic, magic going on there, isn't it? If you look at two students at a time, they're doing the same, then you look at the, that student, the second one of the pair, and look at the next one. Yeah, but, but also, well, the, the exam mode is timed. So the yeah. lights are linked to the time that you've selected as well. Yes. Mm. So the idea is you go into exam, the instructions say do it for two hours, exam mode, these settings, but the teacher only has to look once that the lights are flashing right because you can't get the calculator out of exam mode yes. for, for that period of time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's not like the invigilator has to walk around the entire time yeah. checking that they're all flashing in the right, mm. the right combination. Does the software have an option where it actually tells teacher, you know, you as teacher on the software, um, that any student is not in the mode? Acquisitor mode. No, so I, the, the, I, I, the, the, I think I think light is the only cue. The, there's there's a list of use uh, of the students that are in. Yeah. Mm. yeah so there's the, their list of machines. So, uh, you need every student put their own name into the calculator. You mm. say, yeah, two blows is not in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 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 Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. That's